Mm, there we go. We got some sound now. <clears throat> How is everyone doing? Let's see. Uh, let me turn my screen on. <clears throat> Come on up. There it goes. All right. Boom. Are you ready to draw? <laughs> my name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this is our Monday edition of the Afternoon Live. I always come to you every Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and we uh, draw a landscape or something that has to do with <clears throat> outdoors usually. Sometimes we do interiors. I keep trying to push it interior, but it keeps getting voted down, so we'll see. But um, yeah, this is the winner this week, and so this is what we'll be drawing. And just in case, if you voted on the other one, we actually are going to draw that next Monday because I, the one with in the alleyway with all the laundry. So uh, don't be disappointed. We're going to do that next Monday, okay? It was too close of a vote. And if you're watching this and you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, uh, we have a very active Facebook group. Uh, I would recommend that you join. And every Monday we have a vote of which picture you wanted to draw. And this came in the this one by one vote. Okay. Uh, we also have a live draw on Wednesdays, uh, same exact time, but we always focus on the portraiture. So today we're going to take a look at this, and uh, I'm excited about it. I love this. I really like this subject. So uh, let's get right into it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get your uh, pencils ready or your pens, whatever you're using, and. And let's go ahead and start off with some type of framework. I always like to start with a frame because it gives me some, some place to begin from, all right? <clears throat> now let's, let's go ahead and uh, think about drawing. Usually every time I draw, I always try and think of drawing in three different phases. We look at gesture, we look at uh, construction, and then we go into detail. And did I put this? Yeah, good. All right. So let's start, let's look at a couple, let's talk about gesture before we do it. I do want to point out a couple things which I think makes this picture so interesting to look at and it's important for us to look at composition so this this composition is great they're they're dealing with thirds very nicely so next time you draw a picture I want you to think in that same regard look at look at the ground here it takes up this amount of space well you know that's almost a that's almost a fourth you see that so this the activity of this picture is really shifted down low and that adds a lot of contrast and interest because we got this beautiful open sky and then all of this activity below here. So think of thirds when you draw. That's, that's an, exciting, uh, an interesting idea. So the first thing let's do, let's go ahead and drop in this horizon line and keep this light. Okay, this is part of our gesture. And then let's just quickly put in really a square to be this house but before you do I want you to think about this this idea I want you to think of this look at this negative shape here you see this and look at this negative shape over here those I want you to think more of negative instead of the actual object you're gonna draw so let's do that let's come down here and just lightly think of that the width of that negative shape, okay? And then just come in and come over here like this and then the width of that negative shape over there, you see that? And if I happen to go too fast, please uh, ask me to slow down in the, uh, we are live, so please just ask me to slow down in the chat. Or if you have a question, by all means, ask me in the chat as well, okay? Okay, another another uh, area of gesture that I see that we could use, which I would say is negative space, is this 
Look at this is a great this is a great shape right there. You see that? It almost looks like a sand crawler from uh, Star Wars. <laughs> okay, enough of that. All right, so let's just kind of roughly uh, put this in where we think it's going to go, right? All right, we're going to make some adjustments here, but for right now, that that's a good little uh, shape that we could put in, right? Okay, let's see here. Let's let's drop a uh, hey, Darlene. <laughs> let's drop in this. Let's drop in the width of this of this front uh, house here, and I'm thinking like this right here. Look, there's the width. You see that? It's actually the whole thing there. So I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate and put a line in there. And there's there's another part right there maybe. I'm just looking at negative shape. Look at this. Here's a great negative shape right there. You see this? Let's kind of drop that shape in. We're not even we're not even into a uh, construction phase. We're simply just dropping in some shapes to try and give us some guidelines, right? Okay, let's look at these clouds. Let's look at this cloud here. Let's look at this cloud on the on the left hand side here. Once again, look at this. Look at that negative shape right there. You see that? That will help us proportionally get our cloud where we think it's going to go. And I make sure I'm on the right layer here. Okay, I'm going to do something like that. All right, rough that in. And then up on top here, same thing. I'm just going to rough in this basic, basic shape. There's another cloud there and you got another one just kind of coming in here. <clears throat> All right. Now let's let's look at these daisies here for a second because we're still at this beginning phase. <clears throat> now, what what whenever I have like something like a situation with daisies, it could be even like you could find yourself in a situation with rocks or cliffs or anything like that where you have something that's close up to you and it's large and then and then it's really small in the distance. What I'm going to do is is kind of draw a scale so like like here is you see that one here's this one daisy right here let me uh mark mark this out so you could see it right there oops wrong color you see that one right there that's kind of what i just drew then i'm going to draw this one kind of in the back there so that so this this will tell me like the scale as I draw more and more of these daisies, um, how small they can get, you know. And so this this is going to help me to proportion them so that they keep getting smaller and smaller. All right. All right. Thank you, John. So you have an extreme and then a minor and then it's easy to fill in the gap. It's it's the same it's the same exact principle if you're going to like divide a line. You put the extremes, okay, and then you could find the halfway point, and then you could find the halfway point, and you just keep going, and then you get a nice progression of, of size. You see that? All 
All right, I'm going to take all that away and I'm going to erase this because we're done with our gesture. That's, that's enough information for us to head to the next step here. All right, so let's, let's get into this house here and start working on this construction, okay? <clears throat> so there's a clue. Look at this. Look at this. This is a good clue. This, this line right there, you see that? That really tells us that's going back to the vanishing point. So let's, let's get that angle right. And then of course, th this is all at eye level here. The horizon line is at eye level. So anything at eye level is going to be very flat. So if, if you wanted to think of a perspective grid, you could take that point right there and this point down there and find the halfway point. Then over here, you could find the halfway point between those two. And there's your line right there. You see that? And then I'm just going to keep dividing that in half. And that's going to help me, help me, help tell me the, uh, the grid right there. Okay. All right, let's, let's keep building this shack here. I, I like this shack. So we'll come down here on front like that, right? And then we could see that roof like that this has a slight edge to it okay I'm going to just add some surface lines now to this Okay. Now let's let's come over here and draw two windows. So I'm just gonna these windows are I'm just gonna guesstimate about where they go. It's a shack, so you have a lot of leniency here. Okay, let's look at this. Let's look at the roof here up on top. So this is this is the edge. You see that? And then this house kind of sags. Now let's jump over. Let's jump over and build this. This this piece. This is this will be the hardest piece I think to construct for us. Okay, so let's do that now. So we've got we've got that edge right there, right? There's, there's that corner that's cl close to me there. And I'm just going to 
and there's about the other corner. So all I've done is give you roughly three verticals. This is this is the point I'm gonna look for right here. Oop, let me get that make that a little bit brighter so you can see it. That that's the point I'm gonna look for right now, okay? So I'm gonna come up there. And then that's about where that's at, right there. Now how did I come up with that? Well, one when I looked at the relationship between here and the roof, you see that between here and the roof. And then I also looked at the relationship of where the edge, where it is located toward the edge of the roof. You see that? Okay, so we're right there. Then let's look at this peak. <clears throat> let's look let's look at this peak. Now, let's ask ourselves a few questions before we before we put this in place. Where is this peak in alignment with the top of the roof? Well, it's almost like directly across. You see that? Okay, that's a great that's a great marker. So let's Let's use that. So this is the uh, edge there. So I think we're going to come out right about there. All right, now we can now we can connect that. Okay, so let's check this. Let's check out these two points here. That's our next. Those will be our next markers. So let's let's get this. I'm just going to kind of look at this angle here. And this, there's my marker. There's the back of it. And this is just a little bit lower. Now I could just kind of finish that off. Boom and boom, just like that. I'm going to erase some of those lines right there so you could see it better <clears throat> just making some slight adjustments Continuing here, let's see now. This there's this shack door that's leaning. You see this? So it kind of comes down there like that. And this goes back in perspective a little bit. All right, let's get some uh, other windows here. Let's put this in. And then 
there's another window way at the bottom here. <clears throat> All right. There's also a little window up at top here. We could add that in. How big is that? Chimneys back here. We could put that in and the other one as well. We'll just lightly put those on top of each other. A little window on the side over here. Uh, would I ever, would you ever consider drawing the top? John says, would I ever consider the top, drawing the top bottom of two windows and then erasing the negative space between them? Do you mean like the, the st stills, the small stills on the inside of them? Uh, you could, but these are so small that we're working on them that I probably want to do that. But that's a great question. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. Now, now we're gonna do a little. We're gonna have a little fun. <laughs> this whole thing's fun. <laughs> All right. So this is what I want you to do now. Some of you are very much afraid of going dark, so I want you to go really dark. Okay, and we're looking at the shadows because the shadows are extremely interesting. All right. So let's start right in the center here, and. And I just want you to almost outline the shape of this shadow here. Look, just like that. You see that? I'm going to zoom in here just a bit. And then this shadow looks at, this shadow goes all the way across here and then opens up and then goes, oh, straight down, right? I'm not going to do this yet. I won't rush it. I promise you goes right there okay then we get this weird thing of the handle you see that like you just did on the shadow uh yes but now to john now what i want you to do now as i answer this question for john uh, I want you to go in and make these, I want you to color these shadows so they're black because that's what they are in the picture. And I want you to think of them more as shape. And just sh follow the shape, okay? So, to John's question, uh, I I love watercolor, and somebody asked me once. Yeah, there you go. Someone asked me once, like, "Wow, you you draw like like you would watercolor," and uh, it was the weirdest comment, and I I didn't know what that meant until until I understand it now. This is exactly if you were going to watercolor this picture, this is exactly how you would do it you would drop in these real dark shapes and uh, it, it would just, it would work just beautifully leaving as John asked a great question, like some negative shapes that are going on. Now, that's not probably traditional, but, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just the way I do it.
I don't know. I like it. I like doing it that way. All right. So we've got another. We've got another shadowed shape over here. And then we have a little shadowed shape over here. Look at that. All right, we got the same idea. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got, now that we've put in all of these dark well i got another one right here now that we have all these dark shadows in here let's kind of go over this whole house with a uh, tone and think of where the lightest where the lightest point of the house is and where the darkest so if i squint my eyes of course the far right side is the lightest okay and then I get that roof of the shed that's facing me. That's a little bit darker. And then the shed itself. So let's, I'm just going to drop a tone in here on these two items. And I want my edges, edges to be sharp. So then this is going to have to have a darker tone than the roof on top. Look, this has some type of shadow. I'm going to try and make this <clears throat> sharp. I always, I always like to put tone in before I put my detail on top. Oh, look at that. I forgot to put these windows in on the side. Okay. All right, next I'm squinting my eyes. Okay, the next lighter point is this, the inside of, eh, let me show you. This, this area here is gonna be the next lighter point, okay? So let's drop a, a slight tone there. And I'm gonna follow that up with a tone on the roof. These are almost the roof. This is interesting. This roof is almost the same value as the side. You see that? But they're different hues. They're different colors. Now we can't we can't do that because I'm only using one color. So I'm just gonna make that a slightly darker value. Next, I'm going to put the tone in for the, the main roof. That's darker. That's darker than that side there. And I'm following the... Uh, I'm following the, uh, the direction of the roof. You see, I'm, I'm not going crosswise. Because you get this nice slope going on here. <clears throat> All right, let's get this uh, ladder in, which I like a lot. So let's see, this ladder's kind of coming in here.
Okay, you see these, it looks like a tin roof. It has those uh, ridges. So let's, let's get our ridges in equally. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's, so we're gonna start here and we're gonna end there. So first ridge, we're gonna go directly toward the center, okay? And then I'm gonna go halves. I'm gonna ignore the ladder. And I'm gonna half that again. And we'll half that. And I'm just coming in here with a little little line work to sharpen up my edge just a bit. Okay, this back end of the house is relatively dark, so let's... <clears throat> all right let's get this uh shed in here and look at this it has all of these uh that's kind of a middle middle tone i think and that has these wood straights right And then I'm going to drop an overall tone. Look how much the value in this changes right here at the corner where it, right in there, you see that? So let's get a nice value going across. And then we'll drop in our, uh, uh, our wood texture. This, this could make a nice little picture.
See, I'm still adjusting the value a little bit of that roof. <clears throat> okay. Let's work on our daisies. Do you need a minute? Do you need a couple minutes to get caught up? I'll give you one minute. Okay, let's go ahead and look at, let's use the bulbs of the daisies to help us, okay? So let's, let's put the bulbs in first, because, so I'm just going to, I'm going to keep checking the size. And I'm going to put a slight tone. I am definitely going to put a slight tone in each one of these little. But you don't want to get sloppy here. You want to. There's a lot of them. So just take your time. Be careful that you stay random, that you don't create a perfect pattern, okay? Okay, that's where I'm going to go with mine. <clears throat> what we're going to do next is going <laughs> to, it's going to, I'm going to, yep, I hope it's going to work. <clears throat> I'll give you uh, 15 more seconds. Now I'll tell you what we're going to do. <laughs> All right, in this in this field of daisies, what I want you to do and it's going to require you to slow down and really think this through. I'm even like <laughs> I'm I'm leaning in here cuz I'm going to get serious. <laughs> <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to draw the negative space. I don't want you to draw the petals. I want you to really switch your eye and, 
and draw the negative shape. So what this is what I mean. Let me just watch the screen so you can see what I mean here. This isn't easy, but I think it will make the picture that much better, okay? So I'm gonna start down here and then just kind of watch here. Let's just see. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect science. And you might have a beautiful picture and you're afraid you're going to ruin it. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin mine as well. <laughs> okay? But you see where I'm going with this. So let's, let's take the next uh, five minutes. I'll stop talking and I just want you to try and visualize where the negative space is and just draw in these dark uh, dark shapes, okay? All right, no more talking. unless you have a question.
right. About ready to move on here. Okay. All right, if you're not done yet, just go ahead and save that. You can come back to it, all right? All right, let's go over here and get our fence on the side of our uh, house. So much patience. Yes, that's right. Put it down if you have to. Good comment, John. All right. Let's go up here and uh, hit up some of these clouds real quick, okay? So I'm not really thinking of straight lines when it comes to the cloud. I'm only thinking of straight lines when it comes to the clouds. And I'm just, I'm just slowly making my way around the outline of this one, main one first. And then I'm, I'm thinking of what, just like a tree almost, what is in front of what? So there is this part of the cloud that seems to be in front of the rest of it. You see this? And when I shade my clouds, I'm going to go back and forth like this. This, this gives them a bit of a flat side. Use some overlap. Some surface lines. Overlap. All right. Do that again over here. We'll get start off with the containment line, right? Just like a tree. Here's a little little side note on the tree, on the clouds. Let's say I have a cloud over here. I'm going to show you down here in this corner. <clears throat> when I go to when I go to shade clouds, I will I will put the in, bottom side like this in. Okay, and then like a ref, like a core shadow, I will sometimes sharpen up that, darken that edge right there. That will give me a sense that there is light reflecting up on the underside of a cloud. It's a great little, it's a great little trick to use. And with that, I think we're going to call it today. You might, you might have some more work to do, but I think I've given you enough to, uh, to work on here, okay? So, 
Yeah, surface. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great comment, John. Surface lines on a cloud will really help to tell us the puffiness to the flatness. That works really well. Hey, thanks for watching, everyone. Do appreciate it. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'm going to finish up my drawing here shortly and then post it. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. Thank you, Darlene, for checking in. John, thank you so much. Appreciate all the comments. And that's what I got for you. Post your work in Facebook group. I love seeing what you guys do. It encourages others. And if there's any good feedback, we'll give it to you there. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you later. <laughs> Go out there. Make your day great. <laughs>